now you guys have been having your unit circle, right? So let's look at the unit circle again. So for just any circle. But on basically, most easily we look at this unit circle with radius one, then well, in the language we've been using, you see the first 90 degree angle over here? We've been calling that is a quadrant one, right? It's a one quarter of the whole point, and there's a quadrant one. And then going counterclockwise now, then this is quadrant two, right? In that order, okay? And then count quadrant three, right down here, right? And then this last one right here, that last 90 degree angle is quadrant four, right? Okay. So now why don't you guys look around your unit circle over there? Look right through your unit circle. What's special about this? See, say that say you add some angle data, right? Sine and cosine. Sine is the y value, and this cosine is the x value of your terminal point again, right? So think about it. When you look at when you pick up any when, or when you're looking at any angle theta right here, what's special? What's the sign? I mean, negative or positive sign of these x and y value? What do you see? The x and y, the, the cosine. Sign is positive. And yeah, the x and y are both positive sign, right? And you, any one of you can confirm it. You pick any angle, there's a pi over six, there's a pi over three angle, and there's a pi over the four angle, and what any of those angles that falls in the first quadrant, right? The, the sine value will come out positive sign, right? And the cosine value will also come out positive sign, am I correct? So so now we come up with a generality that so say anytime that you're in quadrant one. Cosine value got to come out positive, sine value got to come out negative, right? So now if you're looking further right here, it's, think about you pick an angle again, another angle, right? And then your terminal point is right there, x comma y. So what do you think about the, anything special about the sign of these uh, value? X got to be positive or negative? Negative, right? So that's a generality. The cosine value that comes out when you're in quadrant two, when your angle is in quadrant two, cosine value got to come out negative. And what about the, the, the y value? Positive. positive right? So it's it's fitting perfectly and it's perfectly consistent with what you've been learning, right? And so with that, or now when you're in quadrant three with that, right? so you can easily now understand that both sine and cosine values are negative, right? And then in that last quadrant, it doesn't matter what angle you're in, but as long as you're in quadrant four with that, that's Positive for cosine and negative for sine. And you can double confirm with that by looking at any of the the, the, the random chosen, right? randomly chosen uh, angle in any of those quadrants that and you can confirm the sine and the cosine value. Because uh, that, yeah. that, I mean, having this understanding, it's not a it's not a hard hard requirement that you gotta know it. But trust me, as if you can utilize this understanding right here later on, it will be very beneficial for your work. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so most of the time we've been, at this point, most of the time we've been calculating the sine and cosine based on the unit circle, right? It's, it's actually the easiest way to understand how we come out with sine and cosine. But now the idea now is that we are, we're going to have to be more flexible than just the, the unit circle. The unit circle restricts down to radius 1, right? So on the unit circle is radius 1, that's why it's called units, right? But now what about when you're on those circles that other than the unit circle. So I'm talking about the other circles. Because so far, I gotta remind everyone again, as a quick scratch work right here, that uh, the definition we've been using, the, so on the unit circle, right? On the unit circle we've been defining, we define the, the sine value for any angle theta to be the, the y value, right? Your unit circle, radius one. So any angle theta right here, right? X, y. So this y right here, that's sine theta. That's how we call it. That's on a unit circle. And then we define the cosine of theta, right? To be the x value. So this x value right here, we call that the cosine angle theta. So it's, it's a very simple, keeping making it simple, but this definition right here is restricted on a unit circle. And then we want to extend that understanding into an other kind of circle right there. So other circles, I mean those circles, we're still taking center at zero, but the radius is no longer one. The radius can be only a half radius, or the radius, the radius can be a five. 
So I'm talking about still center at zero, but some radius, not necessarily one. You guys agree on that? Yeah. Right? And that's what I meant by other circle. So, but still, there's still one generality. The point that sits right on the circle is called a terminal point. It's got point at x and y, right? And then from where this, from, from where that point is, and making the radius with the center, with the, the origin, and the in center position, it creates an angle theta indicating rotation, just like that, right? And so now, think about it this way. Let me pick one particular scenario over here, and you guys will, will understand. Let me draw that situation that. Okay, my picture also has to become a little smaller here. Hopefully, you guys are okay with that. How about I'll pick the radius uh, 2. Okay. You got a radius 2. That's why I would say it's not a unit circle anymore, right? And then your angle here, your angle here is a pi over 6. So I want you guys to start getting really comfortable with using the radius. So instead of writing the 30 degrees angle, right, I wrote it down as a 5 or 6 angle. So the angle, the, the rotation is a 5 or 6 angle. So now let's just calculate. Let's just find the x value and the y value. Okay. Let's just find the x value and the y value. We're just trying to, gosh, we're just trying our best to find the x value and the y value. Forget about sine or cosine. Forget about sine or cosine. Because sine or cosine in the way we know so far is only based on the unit circle with radius 1. But now we're stepping out of that unit circle, right? We're no longer on the unit circle. But then the goal here is to find the x coordinates and the y coordinates of that trivial point. You guys follow me with that, okay? Okay? So now let me do this. Uh, and at this point right here, there's got to be a lot of uh, algebra that comes back right here. So make sure you guys follow with me closely. Okay, so right now, think about we've got that triangular setup right there, right? Terminal point here, x comma y. We want to know what that is, and we want to know what that is for x, what that is for y. All we know is this is a 30 degrees, or it's a pi over 6 angle, like that, radius 2. Okay, so with that, I'm going to do the similar arguments. I'm going to take just that picture. Think about we're going to cut it out from a unit circle, right? And put it here separately. Right? And of course, I'm, I'm just human being. I'm not drawing it that perfectly where I'm looking, right? But, so it's a, yes, we call it as a pi over 6, but in the end, again, it's a 30 degree angle, like that, right? So pi over 6 or 30 degree angle, depending on how you want to call it. So what do you guys realize? That radius here is indeed your hypotenuse of once you cut out just that triangle, right? It's a right triangle. You guys following? The radius. When it was in a circle, that radius 2 now becomes a, a hypotenuse, right? And then here's a shorter leg, and here's a longer leg. Are we good with that there? Okay. And then it's a 30, some, see somebody in class here rang a bell, can you hear that? It's a 30, 60, 90, right? So, what's special? We learned that, uh, we, we recall for ourselves that special generality when you, anytime you're in a 30, 60, 90 triangle with them. Yeah? Half the yeah, which one is half the hypotenuse? The, the shorter yeah, the shorter leg right here. Yeah. See what I'm saying now? So with that being two, right? With the hypotenuse being two, that's gotta be what? One. one. Right? So we utilize directly the, the geometry that we've learned from, from high school, right? And so now with that, one of the leg being one right here, and so we can use a Pythagorean theorem. So the unknown is right here. The unknown, let me label that x, because it came correspondingly from that x coordinate train. This is the x coordinate. And then so we found y so far being 1. Do you guys follow it? Because okay. this y value, right there, that's y value. So, so this shorter side right here is actually the y value. We have found one of the two values. Okay. You guys agree on that right there? Okay. But then back to what I was in the middle of saying, from a right triangle, we famously know that, hey, x squared, the unknown length, plus 1 squared, right? the shorter leg. Okay? Got it equals what? 2 square. The hypotenuse square, right? This thing that we should be familiar with. And so in that way, right here, 2 squared is a 4. That's 1. So we've got x squared plus 1 equals 4, right? We're subtracting 1 from both sides. And that's going to bring that into x squared equals 3. We good that still? Okay. 
which is algebra solving equation. And at this point, we're having a positive, uh, I mean, we're having a quadratic equation, right? We're going to solve, we're going to find a value for x by taking the square root of both sides. So don't forget, we've got to have, we've got to go with plus and minus square root, right? So taking the, the square root of both sides, we go with x equals plus and minus square root of 3. So now, again, how do we choose the appropriate value between the two uh, positive and negative values? Really? Which one is the correct one for our case? The positive one, right? See? Quadrant, quadrant, right? We're in this point right here specifically I'm talking about. We're in quadrant one, right? So that's why it leads us to choose uh, an, an x right here. It's relating. See, when, when we're in quadrant one, the x value will come out positive. You guys following? And that's why so the x value here is the square root of three. Are we good? Okay. So as a, as a conclusion, see this problem that I promoted Right. This problem that I brought up as a promotion right here, we, we know the angle at, at, the, at the center, and then we all, we simply just want, as a goal here, we simply just want it to find uh, the x and the y coordinates of that trivial point. Right? So what's the x value? Square so root 3, right? And comma 1. You guys follow it? I'm not talking anything about sine or cosine at all. I'm just talking about simply as the, co as the coordinates of that trivial point, right? We found out based on the, the, the angle information, right? We found out that the, the, the horizontal coordinates square, square three, the vertical coordinates, right, is one. Sounds good. Because any x and y, any, any point on the plane, right, has x and y coordinates, the vertical and horizontal coordinates. Sounds good, then. But now let me do this. So from that known result, from that known uh, calculation that we finished, right? and I didn't do anything sine or cosine yet. I'm going to further take that. This is just now exploring. We will explore the idea. So I'm going to further explore from that result. Yes. So from where our point is, x equals square root 3, right? And y equals uh, 1 right here because we, once again, we were at that point uh, on that circle, right? So I'm going to further explore and then try to discover more stuff right here. One, why don't we take x, the value right here, and divide it by 2? You see where the two came from? Okay. On this, yes, it's the radius, right? So x over two, which is this, or so now as you already mentioned it, it's over r again, right? Meaning we got the square root of three over two. Okay. What about the y value that we have found previously? We're gonna divide it by r again, right? That gives me a one over two, right? What do you guys notice about these two? Just to, it's just an exploration, just an exploration problem right there. Just trying to discover some new stuff. That we found the x value, we found the y value. What I did was I divide individually each of the x and the y by the radius of your circle. Right? And we came to what? So for the x, we came to square root 3 over 2. Focus on right on this one right here. What is x over r or we for this for this particular point we produce square root 3 over 2, right? What does that equal to? Sine. The, the cosine sine is, is six. Of the, the pi over six. You know what I mean? Right? You guys realizing that? So I'm trying to make you guys realize that right there. And so the one half right here for the same angle pi over six, right? For the same angle pi over six right here, we discovered that. Oh, wait a minute. The one half here turns out to be exactly the sine value, right? Of the angle pi over six as well. See what I mean? Right? So from this little old problem right there, and, and, and we discover a, a new understanding. Now when we're uh, when we're working on other circles other than the, the unit circle, then right, on the other circles, that's how I'm calling it, right? Those circles that no longer a unit circle, then the sign of any angle theta is defined as and is, or is recognized as the y value divided by the radius r. That you don't that see what I mean? Right. And then, with the axis, your circle is here, no longer unit circle, just some circle with radius r. Right. And then, angle theta is here, right. positive or negative direction shouldn't matter, x and y coordinates. 
So x on, on those circles other than the unit circles and x coordinates and y coordinates is not simply the sine or cosine, but then you got to be divided by the radius. That comes back to sine and cosine. You know what I mean? right. And so in that way, cosine of theta right, is the x value divided by r. Okay. So that's what we prefer to recognize. It's a relationship between sine and cosine. It makes things all fitting in and, and consistent with what we've learned, right? But so because for that reason right there, you see, calculating sine, a lot, sine and cosine value, a lot of time we always want to refer ourselves back to the unit circle. I mean, no one is forcing us that you've got to use a unit circle or no one is forcing us that you've got to use a, 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 a circle other than the unit circle. But now it's, it's, we just found out that it's easier to work on the unit circle because when we are on the unit circle, think of that. The radius 1, right? So x divided by 1 is just x. y divided by 1 is just y. And that's why on the unit circle, sine value theta simply just equal y. And then cosine theta simply equals x when we're on the unit circle. Because r equals 1. See how it, it, it works out and connected with the unit circle that we've worked with so far? And so in that way, now let's, let's, let's bring this into an, an actual example over here. Our goal is to calculate sine and cosine right, at some angle. Let's let's draw the situation which I mean unavoidably that when you guys get to this class, I mean, you gotta draw a lot of circles, right? A lot of pictures like that. So the point that you're given here is a negative one comma three, right? So let's put it in. We don't have to be exactly on scale right there, negative one comma three, about right there. Sound good? Okay. And so didn't we learn earlier that any point on on the point, right, belongs to a circle at some radius. You guys follow me? I never said that that radius got to be a radius 1, right? Because any point on the point stays on a circle, or some circle. We talked about the circle got to be x squared plus y squared equals r squared, some radius squared, right? Okay? And so from that, we have a way to calculate how much radius that is, right? Now, from here, what do we have here? The radius for our circle equals uh, x squared plus y squared inside the square root. So we, we divide our sum of that formula. Now it means uh, the square root of, uh, so I'll have uh, negative 1 for x, all squared plus 3 all squared, right? And that means we're looking at uh, the square root of 10. So the radius for this circle, this point, right, relative to the center, you know, being the origin, this point stays on that circle center of the origin, right, with radius square root 10. But then that's not our goal. Our goal of the problem here is to calculate the sine theta and cosine theta. So we've got the given x and the given y now we can be able to think about it. You can always think of that terminal point as making some angle of rotation, right, from the standard position. So theta is right here. We will need some angle of rotation from the, the positive x axis and we're rotating out to whatever that point is, right? Now, in that way, how do we calculate sine? We just now have that formula. We don't even have to know what angle that is. See what I mean? We don't even have to know what angle that is. That's the, the, the beauty of this kind of problem. Right? Right? We don't even have to know what kind of angle that is. Because here, sine of theta, right? when you're working with any general circle, right? any general circle, sine of theta is simply just what? The y value divided by the radius. Agree? So that's giving me what? The y value given here is a 3. Right? Now we're looking at a 3 over square root 10. Right? And then again, I recommend uh, to rationalize that, that denominator here because we wouldn't want to leave the denominator with a square root. So to do that, I'm going to multiply the, the top by a square root 10, and I'm, I'm also multiplying the bottom here by a square root 10, making that cancel out with a square root 10. Right? So we've got 3 square root 10 over 10. That uh, is sine of. Uh, Later. And the, the key came out of this formula, right? and that relationship that we defined. So in that same way, to reach to our other goal right now, the same problem, right? we want to calculate cosine of the same angle data that we have created. Right? So the formula says uh, x coordinates given divided by the radius. So that would be a negative 1 over the square root of 
10. That's the radius, right? That's how large the radius is. So once again, we rationalize, rationalize that denominator, right? That's the multiplying square 10 to both, top and bottom, right? That gives me minus square 10 over 10. This is the cosine value. So this example three over here directly applies that information that we've learned. We can apply, I mean, directly uses, right? The, the information we've learned regarding the those are regarding the sine and the cosine when you're on a some general circle right there, other than the unit circle. Okay. But now I want to bring in another applied example over here. Then, so there could be problems like this out there where you can I can show you how you can apply this new understanding we just learned right here. So let me bring up another example. But it's not example four. I call it as an applied example. Right. Applied one right here. You know, as you're taking your notes closely, you can label that whatever you want. But so, for this example, let's look at something like this. Find x and y. Okay. Let's look at this Got a problem written down so far? So here's how we start. It's again, it's best to draw a little picture over here, right? A, a picture that fits the description we've had here. And whatever I'm writing on the other board is it's gonna be for some scratch work. Yeah. But for now, at least in the description of the problem, we got so we the terminal point, of course, the angle here is given. You see what I mean? The angle is a pi over three angle, right? And then on a circle with radius 6, so go ahead and draw your circle. Circle with radius 6. So right there you got the angle pi over 3. Pi over 3 is known as the 60 degrees angle. You guys agree? Right. So when you're at the 60 degrees angle right there, there's your pi over 3 angle. right? But now you know that the radius here is 6. That's the description right there. Right. So, so that's the terminal point that the problem is looking for. Yeah. That terminal point has x has coordinates x comma y, and we now want to find the actual complete coordinates so, of that point. Do I need? Okay. And so keep in mind that we can't just we can't just go hey cosine of pi over three right, equals x. It's not simply that because this relationship is only on the on the unit circle, right? Now we're on the on a circle bigger than a unit circle, right? We're on a circle that's radius six, yeah, no longer a unit circle. So this relationship is not directly holding. I mean, this relationship is not directly applicable. Yeah. But it's close. It's related. So now this is how I see it. Now, just from that understanding we've had earlier, cosine of the given angle, theta, pi over 6, has to equal x over r. You guys follow with that? It's just that relationship we've learned just earlier. Cosine of Pi over six, right? Our current angle that we're looking at is, and in general, cosine of any angle theta equals x over r. That was written on the, I, I kind of write that reminder right here. Okay. Cosine is x over r on any other general circle. Okay. Now, so let me point out like this for you guys. Now, algebraically, you can treat any one of these as an equation, right? Then we can, let's say, Looking right here at this cosine equation right here, the cosine of theta equals x over r. You can multiply both sides by r, right? If you multiply both sides by r, this is what we end up with here. r times cosine theta will equals x, right? If you multiply the r to the other side. Okay, so, other so that actually gives me, okay, x. We can actually see this as x equals the radius times cosine theta. And so in that same way right here, sine of theta equals y over r. You can multiply r to the other side. I think it's r times sine theta equals y. And we can understand that as, hey, calculating y value, right? You can just simply multiply the radius of your given circle with the sine value of your known angle. So it's some, some new information that we derived right out from the two primary relationships right there. So how is that useful for our problem here? The 
the angle is known as pi over six, right? Actually, I'm writing, writing it out incorrectly, didn't I? This is a pi over three angle. Right? Pi over three angle. So cosine was the square root of three over two, I agree, right? So here, cosine of a pi over three, so it's a one half, right? And then now you multiply with the, with the radius six. So now that gives me, so six times a one half is a three. So we found the x value equal to three. And then just like that, so now we know that sine I would agree, must equal the y over r. So the y value can be calculated by multiplying the radius r with sine of a pi over 3. So, so what is the sine for pi over 3 over here? And this is where I mistakenly said the square, square root 3 over 2, right? And feel free to use your unit circle, because you guys just began with this not too long ago, right? So feel free to use your unit circle. And you should bring that uh, unit circle and keep that with you side by side for, for the, the next main day. So here we're looking at the uh, radius here being 6, right? The sine of pi over 3 comes out being a square root 3 over 2. Right. So now we're going to cancel the 6 with that 2 right there. That's giving me y value, the y coordinate of our terminal point. 3 square root 3 over 3. So that means what? Back on this picture over here, that terminal point comes out being 3 comma 3 squared of 3. That's for that picture. When your radius is set. Okay. So if you want, this problem right here is a, one of the, the very common applications of, of that relationship. <coughs> okay, so let's look at example 4. Sine squared pi over 2 right? plus cosine squared for pi over 2. Not the usual cosine and sine. Sine squared and cosine squared. So I'm going to have to explain the notation a little bit. Okay, so the sine squared here means that when you see that symbol with the square right there, and then the angle here is a pi over 2 angle, right? That's needless to say, but the sine squared here means. You are calculating sine of the pi over 2 as usual, and then you square that answer. That's what the notation here means. And yes, it's the first time I'm showing that. Okay, so it's the sine square, right, or the cosine square means, uh, see, so when you're reading the other notation, cosine square, right, of the pi over 2 angle, it means first, from the inside out, you're calculating, you're going to go ahead and calculate cosine of the pi over 2 angle, which should be, hopefully, right, for the only one of you. And then whatever that result is, we're going to square that. You know what I mean? That's the order of operation, right? So now think about that as a, as a further impact for you. This question in the end is asking, you got to individually look it up, or look it up, or, you know, calculate sine and cosine for angle pi over 2, right, separately. And then in the next step, you square the two quantities there, and then in the end, add them up, right? Right, so sine of pi over 2 is a 1, but we don't want to sine of pi over 2. We want sine squared, you know what I mean? What is cosine of pi over 2? 0, like that. Right? But then we don't just simply want you know, cosine, we want cosine squared. Right? Are we good? We add these values together. What do we end up with? 1. Okay. Straightforward, right? It's, we just follow the, the requirements. And I, I brought up this kind of problem so that the intention here is that you, you understand a certain level of order of operation as well. Sounds good. And then that notation here is going to start becoming popular. For any one of you, the, the, the sine square or the sine cube later on means we after taking the sine value or after taking the cosine value, we're going to raise the power. And that's the way how they, they write power of the sine or cosine function. Okay. Sounds good? Okay. And then I have further intention with these problems here. So let's call it part A. Let's repeat the kind of problem here one more time. So let's do sine square of 7 pi over 4, right? I I purposely see I let you guys show this so that, it's, so that I hope you can understand some generality right here. We want to calculate sine square of the seven pi over four plus cosine square of the seven pi over four. You see how the work is so similar with the earlier one that I've left the way right there? Why don't you guys take some time trying that on your own? Can you? 
Okay. And you already well understood the, the order of operation and all that, right? Sign up to the pi report. Maybe you don't play. And then you don't want to sign it, right? You want to sign square, at least square the whole quantity there, including the native sign. Okay. What about cosine? Just the cosine of seven five one four. Anyone? What's that? Two, two. Three. Right. that, right? And the order of operation. Okay. The add, the last add, right? What's your final answer? That's where you can take some time doing the math. Okay, let me square that. It gives you a simply a one half. Okay, right? Square this also gives you another one half. Okay, right? so what's the one half plus one half? One. Two problems in a row. The point is, the point is. So if it was a problem where I intended to let you guys get comfortable with doing some some various calculations, right? But now the further intention is, is it the same angle? Same angle for each of these problems, right? And then on each of those given angle, we do the, the kind of setup: the sine square plus this cosine square. You can see that that sine square plus the cosine square. Do you, do you see a? Are you starting to notice a generality of that? So from that, what do you understand? What do you see from observation? Right, and not anything. We mean any angle, right? Sine square for any angle, plus cosine for any angle. One. And this is this is really it's it's an equality that's always true. Except anything, right? Yes, it's true for all angle theta. Derive that we kind of derive that based on examples, but you know you guys are math students and they do it up. So let me point out some formal proof for that, okay? For you guys to understand a little bit. The difference between a proof and a, a, an example is that an example we can only point out a few examples, but the proof we mean we gotta make sure it's true for all examples because we don't have time to search for all examples. You know what I mean? Okay. So think about you on any circle. Does it have to be unit circle? Okay. Angle theta, see what I mean? Okay. Terminal points, so theta is here, terminal point at x, comma y. You guys follow it? So, sine has been known, sine of theta is known that when you are in a general circle, right? The sine is what? y over r. You guys agree? And then again, cosine of theta, any angle theta, is x over r. You guys agree that? So what we have been doing is that we're looking, we are considering this relationship, so sine square of theta plus cosine square of theta. The first thing I know that sine square of theta means y over r, r squared, right? And we added that to x over r, r squared. You guys agree on that still? So that's the generality of that. And then, but further on this generality, what else can we lead to? Y over R, R squared is the same as Y squared over R squared. Right. And then on the other term, it's the same as X squared over R squared. You guys agree on that still? Right. And that means what? That means we can make a common denominator, which is already the R squared made our denominator, common denominator. So we put R squared here. We're looking at now at X squared plus Y squared all over R squared. That's all the now, when you're on any circle, centering at zero, zero like this, what's special? X squared plus Y squared is always equal to what? R squared, right? The equation on the circle. So that numerator here gives me another R squared, R squared over R squared. What's R squared over R squared? That's why it's always true. It's true no matter what angle you're on, right? No matter what angle you're at around a circle. If you're going to positive counterclockwise, I mean the positive counterclockwise rotation, or you're going to negative clockwise rotation, you're still your it's always true that this relationship. The x the sine squared plus the cosine squared would always be one. 
this relationship right here is famously referred to as the Pythagorean. Pythagorean. Identity. The identity is an equality that's always true. Right? That's always true for all for all values of the variable. It doesn't matter what variable values you take, it's always true. That's that's why it's called an identity. And this identity came out from I mean, we we use we utilize this factor here, the x squared plus y squared equals y squared equals r squared. That is because of the Pythagorean theorem that we use. So in trigonometry, we, we call this identity right here the, the Pythagorean theorem. I mean, the Pythagorean identity. That's how it's called. And so now, with this understanding, right? You gotta be surprised how people can use it, and, and we can apply it in, in quite a few different ways right here. So I'm going to bring out another problem as an applied problem, as an applied example over here. So theta is in quadrant 2. You see, there's this symbol right here. Maybe it's the first time I'm showing you guys, but it's, it's, it's a sideway cup with a little dash in between with that, it means in. So the angle theta is an angle that's in quadrant two. That's what it says again. That's what the statement is saying. It's telling you. Okay. But now, think about the row right here. And you can put yourself, you can you can put yourself on a unit circle or on the non-unit circle that's completely fine. It doesn't matter what, what it is. So it's easier to, to look on a unit circle. The point is, when you're on a unit circle or you're looking at any unit, or you're looking at any circle, your angle theta is some angle theta in quadrant two, right? And then that angle theta will give you a terminal point. See what I'm saying now? On the on the circle. And so we know the sine value in this problem. We know the sine value, right? But we want to find a cosine value. Sounds good. And then for simplicity, it's just for simplicity we stay with the radius one. So cosine value is exactly the, the x coordinates and the y value is, what, is, is the sine theta. But then we already have sine theta given to be a one-third, right? The angle doesn't have to be those are special ones we found for our unit circle. Okay. Okay. But now here's, the one I, here's what I know. This is given. This is known right here. Right. This is unknown. That's what we're finding. Okay. And then the quadrant the angle is some angle. We don't even know the angle. How big the angle is. We only know that the angle is some angle in quadrant two. Quadrant right? two. So here's how I'm doing it. The Pythagorean theorem says that hey, no matter how, no matter what angle theta you at, right? You will always have famously sine square of theta plus cosine square of theta. Same angle has to be equal one. This is always known. Saying that. We apply immediately that famously known uh, Pythagorean identity. So now in our case, see, keep in mind cosine is not known, right? That's what we are finding. But sine square, we can find that because sine is already given. So sine equals one third. So now in this equation, in this in, in this in this equality, I'm substituting one third for sine square. But now I'm making it one third square, right? Plus cosine square later. And all of that will equal one. So now we're treating it just like a we're treating it just like a, a solving equation. I mean right here I'm having a one ninth plus a cosine square theta equals one, right? And then I'm subtracting one ninth from both sides right there. I'm gonna subtract one ninth from both sides. And that will lead me to cosine square of theta equals one minus one ninth. Yeah. And that will definitely make that eight ninths, right? The cosine squared equal eight ninths after making common denominator and all that. You know what I mean? So now, from here, how do we calculate cosine? Right now we're having cosine squared, right? So equals eight ninths. So calculating cosine, we go cosine of theta. We take the square root both sides. That's all. Plus and minus, always, right? Plus and minus, the first step when you take the square root, plus and minus, square root of eight over nine. Or you can rewrite this as a plus and minus, square root of eight 
over three of them. After reducing that term, square root of nine in the denominator. But then right now we're ending up with two different answers. And so we need to make choice. Which one is the appropriate answer? We got to look at this quadrant information right here. The cosine theta that we have solved for ended up with two values, right? Positive or negative? Yes. What do you see? Negative. It's negative, right? Why is that? Because um, x is negative in the second. Yes, because your x coordinates, right? Right. Or when you're in, when you're in the, the quadrant two, your cosine value got to be negative. You see what I mean? Okay, I agree. So now, you're making that logic with the theta and the quadrant two, right? That leads to that leads to cosine theta it must be a negative square root of eight over three. Now your answer. See what I mean? And then square root of eight can be further. Square root of eight can even be reduced down to a so minus square minus two square root of two over three. In case you guys are fluent with square root, because you can also reduce it down with that. Yes, that's how you found that. So the generality of, of this kind of problem is that, see, a lot of times, sine, for any angle, any angle, you will have sine and cosine coming as a pair, right? You always have, a, 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 for any, at any angle theta around a, unit, around a circle, you will always have a pair of values, sine and cosine. And so the kind of, the generality about this problem is that you have one of the two values given, right? The sine, either a sine or a cosine given, and then you find the unknown being the other one. And then with some given information regarding your quadrant. See what I mean? Right. So that's a problem right here. Preps you for that kind of situation right there. Very common kind of problem. Let's just simplify one to two. So basically I want to ask, is it true? That, uh, now I'm going to continue the question right here. Now, why don't you guys think for me an angle from the, your unit circle, for example, an angle in the uh, ingredients, in the pi expression? Pick any angle. So, the, the title of the, the instruction of this example is right now pretty unclear. Right there. All I'm asking is one question is it true? Ooh, is it true that? Uh, anyone would like to bring a bring up a, a, an angle for me? In the, the, the radian expression? Seven pi over six. Okay. Seven pi over six. Okay. So now for that angle, right? I want to ask this question right here. Is it true that sine of sine of seven pi over six, right? Being less than one is greater than or equal to one. So all I'm asking is, is it true for that statement? So that statement here is an inequality. You take the sine value, right, and you want to verify that the sine value that comes out from this angle falls somewhere between these, these two values right here. See what I mean? So go ahead and double check with that. We'll go ahead and verify that. Is it true or not true? Okay. Question mark there. And then so from that same subject angle, why don't you also try, you try this as well? And then angle, go cosine. Also true. Okay. Two things to look at. Okay. This value right here, sign of that, right, comes out here being one half. This is something with your calculation right there. You can use a unit circle again. So it's negative one half falling in between negative one and one right there? How do we say yes to that? You now you do the same for the other one. Quickly calculate and hopefully that can go quick. Right? That's why I use a unit circle right there. Use your unit circle. It's not a test, so don't try to uh, the, try don't try to do that from, from mental math again with that. Use your unit circle. The, the more the, the, the more often you use it, the, the better it's gonna get. Three over two. Positive, right? Is this value anywhere? Is this value falling between negative one and one? We also agree, right? So now, can we can we do a few more like this? But I expect you guys start picking up the page, right? So, what do you think? 
What about the sign of a compiler four? Is that in between negative one and one? And then the same way with the cosine of a compiler four. This is randomly chosen by Mr. Du over here. Sign of three pi over four. Anyone? Sign of three pi over four. Anyone got that? Yeah. Uh, sign of three pi over four is positive root two over two. Positive root two over two. And right. cosine is negative root two over two. Negative root two over two. Okay. Okay. I'll confirm. So these values right here is this. Once again, that square root two over two is that between a one and one. I mean. To simply verify, you can just punch it into a calculator, right? And, and you can compare the, the numerical value to that, right? And square root 2 over 2 uh, should be exactly between negative 1 and 1. And then the same way with this guy over here, negative 2, and then negative root 2 over 2. Right? And so, in that way, we've got more verification. So, is there a generality that you guys are recognizing from, from the work that we, we're doing here? Right? So, my purpose is to point out that, so now it is true, right? It's always true. So now, no fact for any angle theta or any angle theta. Right? It's true that uh, the sine of theta, the value comes out anywhere from between, anywhere from negative one to one. This point on it will become like very common information right there. And then the same way with the cosine of the given angle theta will also fall anywhere from negative one. One. Okay. You've got two important no fact yeah. okay. regarding sine and cosine. So in that reason, think about it. This is just something for you to check for a consistency of your work right here. Think about sometimes you're doing the work and then your calculation comes out being, you know, for whatever reason, your cosine of an angle comes out being a 1.5, and you know immediately that there was something wrong with the math. Because okay. right? we will never have a cosine value coming out being above 1 or being below negative 1. It's only anywhere from negative 1 to 1. Okay? So that's uh, some known fact right there. So things like this is definitely wrong. Right. So that's concluding our uh, specific uh, specific uh, discussion on sines and cosines. We will keep going further into that, but now let's move on. Right.